The Mandate of Heaven, Heaven's Command, is a political ideology from ancient China which is used to legitimise the rule of a king or emperor of China. According to this doctrine, Heaven bestows its mandate onto a virtuous ruler known as the Son of Heaven. If this supreme universal monarch who ruled all the world under heaven was overthrown, it was often interpreted as an indication that the monarch was unworthy and had lost the mandate. It became a common belief that natural disasters such as famine and floods were divine retributions bearing signs of heaven's displeasure with the ruler. Revolts and uprisings would often follow these calamities as the people saw them as signs that the mandate of heaven had been withdrawn. Dynasties such as the Han and Ming were founded by men of common origins, but they were seen as successful because they had gained the mandate of heaven. It was not required for a legitimate ruler to be of noble birth, but retaining the mandate for a long period of time relied on the just and able performance of the rulers and heirs. Under the Zhou dynasty, the divine rights from the mandate were extended to the ruler's family to legitimise the overthrow of the earlier Shang dynasty. The Mandate of Heaven has been called the Zhou Dynasty's most important contribution to Chinese political thought, even though it coexisted with other theories of sovereign legitimacy, including the Wu Xing, the Five Phases Theory. The five agents of this conceptual scheme are fire, water, wood, metal and earth. The Wu Xing system has been used to explain a wide array of phenomena, including cosmic cycles, the interactions between internal organs, the succession of political regimes and the properties of herbal medicines. It originally referred to the five major planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Mars and Venus, and gained popularity during the Han Dynasty. The Wuxing system appears in many different fields of Chinese thought, including Taoism, music, martial arts, military strategy, astrology and medicine. Included within the Mandate of Heaven was the right of rebellion against an unjust ruler. In a system that had few other checks, the mandate would often be invoked by philosophers and scholars to rein in the abuses of power by the ruler. Dynasties were often uncomfortable with the people's rights of revolution, which was not coded into any law, but was still a positive right in the Chinese moral system. Instead, rebellion was always outlawed and severely punished, such as the Confucian scholar Mencius, who was suppressed for declaring that the people have the right to overthrow a ruler. The people are of supreme importance. The altars of soil and grain come next. Last comes the ruler. That's why he who gains the confidence of the multitudinous people will be emperor. When a local lord endangers the altars of soil and grain, he should be replaced. When the sacrificial animals are sleek, the offerings are clean and the sacrifices are observed at due times, and yet floods and droughts come by the agency of the heaven, then the altars should be replaced. The prosperous Shang dynasty saw its rule filled with multiple outstanding accomplishments. Notably, it lasted for a considerable amount of time, from 1600 BC to 1045 BC, where 31 kings ruled over 17 generations. The dominant social class held authority which flowed from the kings, who were enforced by the military. Neighbouring clans became allies through marriage, whereafter they were adopted into the Shang ancestral temple. During the final years of the Shang, a poem reads, Heaven sends down death and disorder, famine comes repeatedly. The data from a study of past climates shows a long-term period of cooling in the Northern Hemisphere which reached its maximum right around the fall of the Shang Dynasty. In 1059 BC, two unusual celestial phenomena took place. In May, the densest clustering in 500 years of the five planets visible to the naked eye could be seen within the constellation of Cancer. Then a few seasons later, Comet Halley appeared. These events were interpreted by the powerful Lord of Zhou as a visible sign indicating supernatural approval. An inscription of a King of Zhou's speech on an ancient bronze bowl describes it as the Great Command in the Sky. No Western Zhou bronze inscriptions mention the Xia or any other dynasty before the Shang. Although both Zhou and Shang claimed divine ancestry, the Zhou were the first to use the Mandate of Heaven to explain their legitimacy. The Zhou dynasty eventually came to power, but its founder King Wen did not live to see the conquest of the Shang. There was some debate as to whether Heaven's Mandate had fallen onto the senior King of Wen's line or to the House of Zhou as a whole. The dynasty was marked by early success and expansion until the death of a king during a military campaign. Throughout the coming centuries, income, education, employment and community safety waned, eventually leading to the central authority losing control. The upper class was split between two competing candidates for a number of years. By the end, the royal house only had a tiny amount of land and no real military power. During the decline of the royal house, real power was wrestled from their grasp, but their divine legitimacy was never brought into question. The Zhou king was reduced to a figurehead, but his prestige remained supreme as heaven's son. 
However, there is evidence written on hard to read surfaces that the founders of the state of Shin privately believed that their ancestors had received heaven's mandate. As early as 600 BC, multiple easier to read inscriptions attest to this idea. The Shin would eventually go on to conquer everyone else and become the first dynasty of imperial China, but it's unclear how they interpreted their approval to replace the Zhou kings. Whether they believed they should be appointed heirs after the Zhou fell, or if they should be granted authority over the lands whilst the House of Zhou still stood. When the Zhou dynasty did come to an end, the Xin absorbed the remainder of their lands, as well as those of their competitors. The Mandate of Heaven did not play a direct part in their public relations, going unmentioned in all surviving material. Widespread revolts by prisoners, peasants, unhappy soldiers, ambitious minor officials, and remnants of the recently defeated aristocracy rapidly brought the Xin government to its knees. The ensuing Zhu Han contention ended with Liu Bang's success and the establishment of the Han dynasty. Historical documents from the Han era paint the Xin dynasty in a deeply unfavourable light. Tyrannical policies, the incompetence of the second emperor, and an account of an illegitimate birth for the first. Within these records, it's clear that the Xin had lost the mandate if they ever had it to begin with. One uncomfortable fact at the time was that the Han founder Liu Bang rose to power from humble beginnings and achieved victory through military accomplishments. To accommodate this, he was ascribed a magical birth, and later a divine ancestry that many noble families claimed descent from the Yellow Emperor to justify their right to rule. According to legend, Liu Bang was conceived after his mother encountered a dragon during a rainstorm. When Wang Mang took power in the short-lived Xin Dynasty, he used the acceptance of the Mandate of Heaven to his advantage. He fabricated auspicious events pretending that Heaven had chosen him as the new son. He quickly fell from grace, Whereafter the House of Han was restored to power, but the Mandate stood on uncertain grounds. Some saw the Mandate as primarily being inherited through ancestry, while others abandoned this concept altogether in favour of the Five Phases theory. In 220 AD, the final Han Emperor abdicated to the powerful minister Cao Pi. During this transfer of power, the Mandate of Heaven played a large role. The court's fortune teller Zhu Zhi listed all the signs from divination and historical texts showing that Cao Pi's way should succeed the Han. A sequence of written statements from various officials soon followed, and all agreed that the House of Han had been in decline for some time. This culminated in Emperor Xi'an of Han formally abdicating, where he specifically mentioned that the Mandate of Heaven was not permanent for any single house. The idea that Cao Wei was Heaven's legitimate successor dominated for several centuries. The alternate theory that Shu Han was the real successor was first articulated in the 300s, and was universally accepted by the much later Song dynasty. Chinese emperors invoked virtue by striving to be a good influence for the people, and performing rituals to benefit their status. The belief was that with an inherent good moral character, the Mandate of Heaven could be retained. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.